right to come to him. And he was so famous, that's why he made he, he's made more money than any writer in history because of Hollywood, partially, but also because he sold millions and millions of books. And also Stephen King wrote this book called On Writing. He talks about writing. Some of the things I'm telling you, I learned in this book. One thing he does, Stephen King writes freely. I think we talked about making a plan for a story, right? Some writers, they have to make a plan, right? That's just the way their mind is. Stephen King, he just writes, and he's able to continue the story, just keep writing, keep writing, keep writing. Imagine it, okay? Now, um, however, in his last draft, okay, just like you're writing two or three drafts. He's probably writing five, I don't know, six. But before the last draft, okay, well, he cuts out sometimes 50% of the words. And he, he takes out everything but the meat. Right? Just like we're doing now. We, we're taking sentences that are 25 words long that are grammatically incorrect. We're taking them down to nine words. We can't take any more words out. They're grammatically correct, right? We could choose better words maybe, but we're not gonna do that today. Today we're just gonna talk about getting rid of words and correcting the grammar, okay? Stephen King said, you have to learn how to take out your words, right? Some people, Sarah, they, they write and they think, it's so beautiful, I don't want to take any words out, right? I've thought about it a long time. But actually, maybe 40% of your words are not beautiful. So you have to learn how to just say, okay, I don't, I, I don't want to do it, but get rid of it. If it's not necessary, get rid of it. Okay? So, I got rid of it. Either they read the story or watched the play. Nine words, sentence number three, finish. Okay, sentence number four. Teacher, how many sentences are there? A hundred. We're gonna be here for a month. I'm gonna order pizza for dinner, okay? This is the last one. And after that, I'm going to let you go today early. Okay? So keep your eyes open wide. And let's take a look at the last sentence. As for the cast, paint a uh, case. Can you read the sentence? As for the cast, mainly there are at least five to six characters. This depends on the version of the story with five variants. Alright. Well, the first thing I can say is, why use parentheses? This is a complete sentence. You could just say, this depends on the version of the story, which is quite variant. That's a correct sentence. It's too many words, but it's grammatically correct. Wait. Don't forget your one page of notes, Chris. Um. Okay, so let's take a look at it though now. Again, on Arton.com, this mainly, that's probably on there somewhere because it's a word that many uh, Thai people misuse. Uh, excuse me, the word mainly does not mean, what is the writer thinking about here? Tell me another word, Sarah. What do you think is in the writer's brain? Almost, but not really. There's another word. 
Not always, but usually. Usually, okay. So later on, I'm going to change it to usually. So you have to remember that you cannot always use mainly to mean as a synonym for usually. Cream consists mainly of milk and sugar. That's okay. Mostly, mainly, right? If you want to use the word mainly, you can use the word most. Use it as as use it to mean mostly. Okay, so what does mainly mean? Well, also the problem is it adds no meaning to the sentence anyway. It is mainly useless. Why use the word mainly? What does it mean? Ice cream consists of milk and sugar. It's almost the same. Right? It's better to be clear than it's better to be clear than to try to write too much. If you say ice cream is milk and sugar, whoa, consists, that's a big word. What does mean, okay, the cast is usually, as for the cast. Okay, so the notes are a little bit mixed up here, okay, so take a look.